Good morning and welcome to the Knit Shift episode 15. My name is Lara and today is Friday, January 3rd. January. That's not a good start. July 15th, 2015. And it's not July 15th. I'm going to restart this. Okay, we're back and hopefully I won't make mistakes again. Uh, this is the Knit Shift. It's a knitting podcast where I talk about yarn and projects. Show notes can be found on theknitshift.com. You can watch this on YouTube, iTunes, or on the blog. I am on Instagram as Lara Mahalski. I'm on Ravelry as Yarnstormer. And there is a Knit Shift group over on Ravelry. So come on by and say hello. We'd love to have you. This episode, I am going to talk about a little podcast schedule change. I have a new prize for our baby knit along that's going on over in our Ravelry group. I have a little bit of stash enhancement, a finished project, a new project on the needles, and I came to turn terms about another project I have on the needles. So lots to talk about. First up is the podcast schedule change. There very likely won't be an episode two weeks from today. Um, I am going out of town, going up to Washington, D.C. for a little trip with some girlfriends, so I probably won't be able to film early. But if I do, great. And two weeks after that, the, the like Friday, July 30th, 31st, I definitely won't have a podcast as I am visiting a friend in New York and I'll be gone starting Thursday. So probably no podcast in two weeks definitely no podcast in four weeks. But I've only missed one other episode since I started this in late March, so I feel like that's a pretty good track record. So this week, it's been a very good week around here. I am coming to you from my living room as always, um, but what you can't see is that my laptop where I am filming is sitting on a new ottoman. Um, this chair is kind of a nice teal oversized chair and a half and we bought it with an ottoman and now I can put my feet up while I sit in this chair which is very exciting. So hope it's a little less steady than what I normally use which was a coffee table so hopefully this isn't too wibbly wobbly. Um, it's been a busy work week. Uh, you know, it's, if you're in America, it's the 4th of July this weekend. Um, today is my office's holiday, but I am always off on Fridays, which means I don't technically, I don't get a three-day weekend. I'm off Friday and Saturday, and I go back to work Sunday, but I do get to take another day off um, at some point, and I get to be off on the actual holiday, which is pretty exciting. I don't really have any big plans. Um, like a cookout or anything. I live in an apartment, so grilling isn't totally an option. Um, but I, my boyfriend and I are probably gonna go see a movie tomorrow. Um, we might go see Inside Out, the new Pixar movie that's been out for a little while. And we might go watch fireworks in downtown Norfolk. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I know one thing for sure. Tonight I am hanging out with my girlfriends and we are going to see Magic Mike XXL. And we might have been texting each other every day about it because we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. We're going to dinner first and then we're going to go see the movie. Um, so that'll be really fun. And I'll tell you more about my week later on toward the end of the episode. So um, first I wanted to remind everyone that there we are still having our baby knit along over in the Ravelry group. It started June 1st. It goes through August 31st. Um, so you've got still two months to finish it, basically, if you want to knit some baby stuff. All the details are over over in the RAV group, so check it out. Um, I wanted to, I brought out the prizes to show you once again what they were, um, especially because we have a new prize this week from a, from a uh, generous Etsy shop. So I have shown you this before, but here is a skein of yarn. It's Malabrigo. And it's a single ply fingering weight yarn called Machita, and the colorway is Araikita. And it's a lovely green and blue. It makes me think of a Monet painting, kind of. But just lovely greens and hints of purple in there. It's just really, really lovely. So that's one prize. We also have a needle keeper to give away. And if you are new here, I've talked about these before. This, it looks like a magic wand. It's open on this end. You put your needles in this end, or no, you put your needles in this end where there is a, it's like a, a little silicone tip here and it keeps the needles in. You know, you can just put your needles in this and carry it around and your needles won't fall off. So um, that's fantastic. Stitches won't fall off needles, all that good stuff. Um, and if you are interested in buying one, 
they're they are sold through an Etsy shop, but details are available, I think, on needlekeeper.com. I'm looking at the back of this. Um, but there's a lot of different colors, um, and it holds up to a US 9 needle. This one's a black one. This was my yarn store is selling these, my local yarn store, and they've been so popular they've had to reorder them several times. So it's a very cool tool. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the final prize is from an Etsy shop. I was contacted on Ravelry uh, this week by, um, by Wendy of Nitty Kitty Bags and she wanted to send us a project, send me a project bag for our knit along. And I said, sure, that would be great. Thank you so much. So this will be another prize. It's one of her sock bags and it's, I didn't measure it, but it definitely holds a cake of sock yarn and a sock. It's a perfect size for a small project and it's got this really cute sheep, sheep as a ball of yarn fabric. How cute is that? And it's got our little tag here, Nitty Kitty Bags, and there is a, it's a, there's a zipper, and it's lined with this lovely red fabric, and she even attached a little zipper pull of a cat, which I can hold up here. And the funny thing is, last night, I got this, you know, I opened it in the mail last night when I got home from work, and you know, it's the end of my week, and I'm tired, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And I looked at the zipper pool and I looked at the wrong side of it. And I was like, is this a unicorn? And then I flipped it around and I realized, no, Laura, that's the cat's tail. I'm just a doofus. So anyway, this is the, the unicorn kitty zipper pool. So very cool bag. Thank you so much, Wendy. Let me hold up her card here so you can, um, and I'll link to her shop in the show notes. It was a very generous offer. I'm covering up her address just because it's on the card and I'll stick a card in the mail to whoever wins this bag. So there's Wendy and Nitty Kitty Bag. So thanks Wendy very much. That was very generous of you. All right, what is next on my list to talk about? Oh, my finished knit of the week. This is really exciting. I, last week, I showed you a baby sweater I was knitting for a friend and I had just started the first sleeve. Well, I knit the entire first sleeve, knit the second sleeve and attached the butt, washed it, blocked it and attached the buttons because I was so excited to finish it. So here is my core again. I am in love with this sweater. I just think it is the cutest thing ever. This is a paid for pattern. It's about four euros or $4.50. You knit it on fingering weight yarn and it comes in five sizes up to 18 to 24 months. I chose to knit the size, the three month size. And I think I, it came out, it, I think it came out probably a little big, maybe closer to a six month size, but that's okay. It gives um, the baby a little more time to wear it. But there is a cable. You can see the yoke has cables um, running along it. And it was a very simple pattern. I really love knitting this. The yoke went so fast. I definitely would knit this again. It's a very clear pattern. And these are purple but this these are purple buttons that were just um, randoms from Joann's that I've had in my button stash for a while. And the yarn though is really the star of this project. This is sorry, there the upstairs neighbors are vacuuming and the dog doesn't like it. Come here, Grace. Come here, it's okay. It sounds like a monster is up there, so I should probably pause this, but I'll keep continuing unless it gets really bad. So the yarn is Lammy Toes uh, Moon Pie Merino in colorway Changeling. Okay, we're back. I think they're done vacuuming. It's a very thorough vacuuming job. So the yarn is Moon Pie Merino by Lammy Toes in the colorway Changeling. This is dyed by my buddy Amanda over at Not A Podcast. I love this yarn. I love everything about it. I think it's just so gorgeous. It would be a great shawl. I love it as a baby sweater. It's really pretty, so do check out her Etsy shop. I will link to it in the show notes. So I will be giving this to the recipient in um, at the end of the month when I go to New York City. So they don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but I really think they're gonna love this. So Corrigan, check it out. This brings me to stuff that's on the needles. 
I have one new project, one project you've seen, and one that I'm going to frog. So first up is the project you've seen. This is a sock. I'm carrying this in a bag from Nomadic Yarns Ashley from her Etsy shop. Um, it's just a little sock cube. It, it really does hold just a skein of sock yarn and a sock. Very cute and tiny. Fits in my, my small purse. And I just love the polar bear print, so very cute. I'm knitting this sock out of Flying Kettle yarn, and it's her glider base, which is a merino nylon blend. And the colorway is Grog Bellied Sea Dog. Um, I shared a photo of this on my Instagram, and everyone, I think it's a universally loved color. I just think it is so cool. There's so much going on here. There's, it, I don't know how she does it, but there is yarn, the dye is on the yarn so that what is on this side isn't necessarily on the back side of the yarn. I'm going to see if I can find a place to show you. I don't know how she dyes it, but it's like here, this little... This little blip of blue right here is not on it when you spin it over. I don't know how you dye yarn. I know nothing about dyeing yarn, but I know this is great speckly yarn. It's kind of a nice pale blue, sky blue base. The light is not there. That's a little better. It's a sky blue base, but there's pops of fuchsia, magenta, purple. There's some really bright... Um, like neon yellow right there, like a highlighter yellow that I just think is really fun. Navy. Um, I really love this. I'm knitting these on size ones, um, Chai Goo size ones, which are smaller than I normally knit my socks. But I really wanted a tight gauge for this so that these would wear well because I, I was really excited about the yarn. Um, I cast on, I believe, 16 and 16 stitches, 32 stitches, Judy's Magic Cast On increased quite a bit at first every round and then I backed off to every third round to give it a nice round toe. Um, I believe this is a 68 stitch foot because I had to use a smaller needle. Fish lips kiss heel and now I'm on the leg. Last week I was right about here so I've made quite a bit of progress. Put this back in the bag. Here's the cake by the way. Really fun stuff. And it's just a fun name, Grog Bellied Sea Dog. Yar. Um, next up is a new project on the needles that I'm very excited about. I started this yesterday, and because it's pretty small, I've made quite a bit of progress. I'm, I'm carrying this around in my knothouse bag, which is a store in Frederick, Maryland. This is... Milo Milo Bambino, which is a little baby vest. And you can see here, I'm just it's easier to hold it this way. You can see here I have I have the neck and I'm knitting the body of the vest already and I only started it like a day or two ago. Um Milo there's a pattern called Milo or Milo that is very um popular that was for larger sized for like um I don't know the sizes, but I know it goes up for several years. But Milo Bambino is for smaller. Everything is size uh, smaller than you, uh, than age one. Here it is. It's a tiny version of Milo. So it comes in five sizes, ranging from um, preemie, 34 week preemie, all the way to one year. So five sizes. And it's a very simple vest with garter um, at the top around the sleeves. And then there are, she gives you cable charts for about for five different cables, depending on what you want to put on the front of the vest. So I am knitting this for my cousin, my cousin's wife, who is expecting twin boys. So this is the first of two vests. Um, I'm knitting them in the same yarn. This is Malabrigo Sock. I've had it in my stash forever. I cannot remember the name of it. I'd have to look on Ravelry. Um, but the construction of this is very, very simple. Um, it's, it's kind of different. I've never knit a vest before. You cast on and you join in the round and you keep making the increases bigger and bigger. And then you bind off for the shoulder straps. It was super ingenious. I've never knit a vest, so this was pretty exciting. Um, I'm knitting the size six month size. 
However, I'm using, I used a smaller needle for the garter in the hopes that it would come out like a three month size because they're twins. It's tricky because they live in Florida. So that's why I'm making vests. Um, they'll be born in November. So I thought if I made a cute little vest, it could work for like newborn photos, Christmas photos, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, they're, they have a son already. And he, um, my uncle's just a big guy. Like we're, it's. I just feel like these babies are going to be big babies. So I'm hopeful that three month size will work just for, just for a few wearings. That's all, you know. And then they're keepsakes to put away. I haven't decided what cable pattern I will use, or um, if they will be the same cable pattern on both. But it's a really lovely semi solid green. It looks more variegated here than it really is, but it, it's semi solid for sure. Wish I could get the light just right. That's a little better. So I am flying along on that. I am using, I used a size two for this garter and I have switched to size three down here. Um, it's a $6 pattern, it's paid for, and I will pull up the designer's name in just a second. Georgie Hallam is her name, or his name, but I'm guessing Georgie is a woman. Okay. So that's uh, my new project on the needles. And now I wanna show you a project I showed you last week, but I'm going to frog. So you will remember a couple weeks ago, I like a week and a half ago on Instagram, I shared lots of photos of green yarns because I wanted to turn them into a pie shawl. And I just was desperate to cast on a pie shawl. I just, there was nothing more than I wanted. Pardon me, my eye is just itching me today. Um, I'm wearing my contacts, which I don't often do. So I cast on a pie shawl, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized I'm not going to wear a pie shawl that looks like a, a um, archery I can't, bullseye. It's going to look like a bullseye, and that's just not my style. I know I'm not going to enjoy wearing it, so why should I knit this. I know I want to knit a pie shawl in a single color. So I had knit a bit further on the shawl. But I'm going to frog it. And this will become something else. So I think it's important as knitters to come to terms with it's important to come to terms with whether you will use it or whether it's something you really want to make. You know, why go to all the effort? Why put yourself through a project if you know it's something you aren't going to actually enjoy? I think that's an important question we all need to ask ourselves before we get going. But then, you know, if you don't listen to that little voice in the back of your head before you start the project, I think it's important to listen to it as you get started, which is what happened to me. I was so ready to cast on that I, I really ignored that little voice back here like, you aren't really going to wear this, are you? So um, lesson learned. It happens. Um, I still have the other greens. That dark green was Jill Draper Makes Stuff, Esipus Sock Yarn in Deepest Cypress. And then the other two colors I was going to use were Dream and Color uh, Smushy in Scorched Lime, which is a lovely mucky green and then I have Jill Draper makes stuff in Luna Moth which is a lovely lime green so I'll find projects for these I'll get there so let's see what else did I want to tell you about oh okay that that brings us to the end of works in progress and that brings us to spinning um, those of you who are spinners will know that it is the tour de fleece starting tomorrow um, it's a time when spinners can make a spinning goal, um, spin for a certain project. I have participated in the past for knitting projects. I designed and knit, um, I, I made a custom fitting pair of knee-high socks for one Tour de France a few years ago. But um, that's been it, because I'm not a spinner. But now I have a drop spindle. so. I brought the drop spindle out to remind you and myself of the drop spindle that I have. This is a David Make Stuff Walnut Spindle. Um, it's one of his colored pencil spindles. And I have my fiber that I've been practicing with on here. 
Um, it's really, oh, don't judge me, fancy spinners. It's a work in progress. So I have a lot of practice fibers. So I think my goal for the Tour de Fleece is to spin 15 minutes a day. Just not worrying about anything except getting the motions down and getting more consistent in my practice. I have all of this, this green fiber that's on the spindle. This is a generous gift from my friend Kate over at Stitch Addiction Podcast. I don't know what it is, she doesn't know what it is, but it's got a nice long staple, so it's good for a new spinner like myself. I have, this is either Coopworth or CF CVM from my buddy Tasha. Um, I have not spun with this. I've only ever spun with the green fiber. And I don't think I showed it on the podcast, but I, Kate had recommended wool gatherings for some practice fiber. So I bought an eight ounce, really a ball, eight ounce bump, whatever you want to call it, of mixed BFL. I haven't even opened it yet, but it is super squishy. And I'm very excited. Eight ounces, this is a lot of fiber. So I don't know what I'm going to do beyond the green yarn and the practice. Um, hopefully I will get through the green fiber and the Coopworth slash CVM. So we'll see. That's my goal. I'll let you guys know next week how it's going. Um, the tricky thing will be going out of town to DC in two weeks. I don't know if I'll bring my drop spindle on the train and all that. So maybe I will just spin longer in advance and after to make up for it, you know, add a tack on the time to make up the difference. So that brings me to Yarms, which I have not had in a week or two. Um, Yarms is, if you're new here, Yarms is just my word for yarn. When I say I have, I got, I got some Yarms in the mail. So there you have it. I, I placed my first order with Knit Picks in a really long time. I, I hesitate going into this, but a few years ago, there was a lot of drama in the knitting world with Knit Picks. They had had a breach of their security system, but didn't really alert people in what a lot of people felt was a timely fashion. And I was one of those people that had experienced fraud on a card that I had used through Knit Picks. Whether it was because of Knit Picks or not, I don't know, but it just the timing was not great, so I just didn't feel comfortable buying from them for a while. But I needed some new knitting needles, and that was the place I wanted to buy them. So I relented. I'll give them another chance. So I bought a set of needles, but I also decided to browse their yarn and see what they had. And, you know, they're always introducing new stuff over there. So they have a merino cashmere nylon uh, sock yarn these days. So I thought, well, for science, I really need to be buying some of this yarn. So I bought two balls of Capretta, which is their 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon. This is 230 yards of Capretta in the Colorway Harbor. And it's a lovely, I really, I mean, honestly, this, this is the color of this couch, basically. I really have a thing for teal, I guess you could say. You know, it's not quite what I thought it would feel like. It almost feels a little cottony to me, but I think I want to knit it up and see how I feel about it. But I bought it with a, another ball of turmeric. And I just, I love these two colors together. Maybe they'll be a cowl or a striped pair of socks. I'm not sure. But it's a lovely mustardy, it really is like turmeric. So two balls. I mean, these were like five bucks a piece, six bucks a piece. I can't remember, but very reasonable for merino cashmere nylon. So that's it for stash enhancement um, for yarms. And that brings me to my final segment called Odds and Ends. Um, I haven't shown you this shirt yet in full, but it says, if I can't take my yarn, I'm not going, which is just basically, this shirt is me, and I'm sure it's, it's just you in a t-shirt. Because I take my knitting everywhere. I take it to a restaurant, I take it to a bar, I take it in the car, Everywhere I go, I have knitting with me. And if I can, I, I'm gonna take it to Magic Mike tonight, whether I pay attention, whether I feel like knitting and instead of watching the movie remains to be seen. 
but I will have knitting with me. Um, and this is shirt is from lookhuman.com. And all credit goes to Josh, my boyfriend, who found it and sent it to me. And I said, I need this shirt right away. So it's pretty fun. And it's a very soft t-shirt. It's one of those super soft shirts. So last weekend was a really fun weekend for me. Um, I filmed Thursday. I worked Thursday night. And then Friday morning, I got up and I drove to Richmond to meet up with a friend, my buddy Melissa. Melissa is a knitter and a Twitter friend and an Instagram friend and um, we've hung out many times. Um, she's a ridiculously talented baker and she cans um, fruits and vegetables, you know, jams and salsas and stuff. So we first met in person when she had not yet knit a pair of socks and I said, I will knit you a pair of socks in exchange for some jams. So that's what we did. We, we kind of had a swap and we met up in Richmond for lunch and we do it a lot I mean this has to be at least the sixth or seventh time we've met up for a meal so um, I drove up to Richmond and met her and it was kind of a fun adventure because she had to she lives in Charlottesville so Richmond really is meeting in the middle we each take the interstate interstate the opposite direction I'm in Southeast Virginia and um, she had to go pick up a cake in my direction. So I met her at a coffee shop in Richmond and parked my car on the street and then I got in her car and she had to go pick up a cake for her sister-in-law's graduation party. Um, Melissa had lived in Williamsburg for a while and so the baker was toward my direction. So we met this baker at a gas station off of the interstate and picked up this beautiful, beautiful cake. And I will link to his cakes in the show notes because um, I, I feel like I'm going to have to order one someday. Um, it's Cakes by Charlie is is his name. So we picked up the cake and then we took it back to Richmond, dropped it off at her sister's house for safekeeping, and she and I went to dinner at Mellow Mushroom, which is a pizza chain, um, kind of, I don't know where it is in the country, but it's around. So really, really, really good pizza. Um, so that was a really fun day. I drove back home Friday night. And then on Saturday, um, I went to a peach festival with my boyfriend. Um, Josh's favorite fruit is peach. So the fact that there are several peach festivals in our area means we have to go to them. We just have to. So it's put on, it's Knott's Island is not really an island in North Carolina. It is a, um, it's kind of a peninsula off of Virginia. Um, basically, if you drive south in Virginia Beach, it's an island and that it is surrounded by water on three sides, but Virginia at the top. So um, it's about an hour from my house. It's pretty far um, on a lot of back roads through really rural Virginia Beach. A lot of people think of Virginia Beach as the oceanfront and the touristy parts, but it's a very big city actually, and there's a lot to it. Um, a lot of really rural farms. So. We drove out there and on the way it rained, we had lunch in Virginia Beach and then we drove on to the festival and it rained, it really poured for a little bit, um, but it, you know, it held off where it didn't rain at the festival, um, which was very nice. And it was basically an excuse to just go eat a lot of food. Um, we got popcorn, we, they have, they serve, it's not like they serve peaches like 50 ways. They have a few peach dishes, but you can buy peaches and you can buy peach pies. That seems to be the big focus. So we had some snacks. I had grilled corn on the cob, which was ridiculously good. Um, and we brought home a peach pie, which I mostly took to work after we each had a couple slices. And um, we bought, we met a peanut farmer and I brought his peanuts to show on the podcast. So we met Farmer Dave of Farmer Dave's Market. And he had a booth, and he all all of this is kind of jokingly misspelled, if you can see what's on it. So we bought two containers of peanuts from Farmer Dave. Um, this is a mixed honey honey roast and kettle cooked, and then we also had one that was just um, kettle cooked, you know, salted roasted peanuts, but they're gone. They've been gone. But I like the salty sweet combination. So. 
Farmer Dave has a website, but I tried to go to it and it was broken, which just, it seems about right. I mean, it was a very small operation. So it's Farmer's Dave, Farmer Dave's MKT.com. Maybe it'll be working again. I don't know. But here's Farmer Dave's info. He lives in Currituck, North Carolina. Very nice man. They're delicious. So, I think that about brings me to the end of the episode. Oh, uh, I don't have any knitting patterns to share, but I do have a lipstick of the podcast to share. I am wearing Revlon Super Lustrous Cherries in the Snow. I don't think I've worn this one yet. This is a very classic Revlon color. It's a very pinky red. The color is not super great today, but I'll apply a little more. I can't scoot super close, but there. But it's a very good classic pink red. <coughs> I like it a lot. It's been around, I think, since the 1950s. So there you have it, cherries in the snow. And I believe that brings me to the end of the episode. So thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate feedback on the episode. So have a great weekend. Um, happy Canada Day, by the way, if you are Canadian. That was just a few days ago. Happy 4th of July if you are in the United States. Have a safe and wonderful holiday weekend. And I'll see you next week. Bye.